Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Broadley and welcome to my presentation on Busting Brachsphalic Breeds, the welfare concerns of breeding Brachsphalic dog breeds. Today we'll cover different Brachsphalic breeds and their history, the health complications that Brachsphalic breeds face and the repercussions that come along with these health conditions, how this also affects the dog's quality of life and welfare, and finally, how these issues can be reduced and prevented. So what is a Brachsphalic dog breed? A Brachsphalic breed refers to a short skull shape which gives the appearance of a pushed in and flattened muzzle. Their lower mandible is often disproportionately longer than their upper maxilla, so their lower jaw is normally longer than their upper jaw. The term Brachsphalic comes from the Greek with brachy meaning short and cephalic meaning head, so together meaning short head. Often Brachsphalic is confused with how short the dog's muzzle is, however it is actually how short the skull is compared to the elongated skulls of mesophallic and diacephalic skulls, as indicated in the arrows shown in the figures. Out of the 218 UK Kennel Club registered breeds, 18 of these are Brachsphalic. Shown here are some of the most popular and well-known Brachsphalic breeds as determined by the Kennel Club UK. These breeds are the Boston Terrier, Boxer, Bulldog, Bull Mastiff, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, French Bulldog, Pug and Shih Tzu. As shown in figure two, some of these breeds, such as the Bull Mastiff and Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, have longer muzzles but still have the shortened skull, so are therefore a Brachsphalic breed. These breeds have been around for almost 2,000 years, being selectively bred to preserve their genetical deformities regardless of potential health conditions. However, they encountered over a 100% increase during the Victorian era due to the popularisation of what is now known as purebred dogs. Brachsphalic breeds were often owned by royals and higher-ups as companions and were therefore seen as desirable and more valuable, increasing the demand. So for breeders to breed and maintain these traits and their purebred status, they were selectively bred, which often leads to inbreeding, creating more genetical health conditions. Within recent years, studies such as Steinert suggest Brachsphalic breeds have risen in popularity due to their distinct features, which are seen as anthropomorphised, due to the squished appearance of their muzzle, which is seen as cute. Brachsphalic breeds can suffer from many health conditions which can compromise their welfare due to the suffering they endure with the symptoms of these conditions. Breeding these dogs encourages the health conditions as most are genetical, meaning that they are passed on from the parent. The most well-known health issue associated with Brachsphalic breeds is breathing difficulties. They often struggle with their breathing due to having an elongated soft palate Synotic nares, diverted laryngeal saccules, and hypoplastic tracheas. Brachsphalic obstructive airway syndrome, also known as BOAS, is a breed related genetic disorder which affects over 50% of Brachsphalic breeds, varying in severity. Although lower severity cases are not always reported, so this figure is estimated to be higher. It is a progressive and lifelong disorder. Symptoms and severity can range from snoring and coughing to shortness of breath leading to sudden collapses. There are many other severe health complications which can affect these breeds. One example is overheating quickly and being prone to heat stroke, as they are unable to pant effectively to release heat. Their restricted airflow makes it harder for them to properly exchange hot air for cold air to regulate their body temperature as they breathe out this warmer air. Their smaller skull size can cause eye issues as their eye cannot correctly fit in the orbit, also known as the eye socket. This can be seen in image 4. Often this results in them not being able to close their eyelid all the way over the eyeball, causing dry eyes leading to ulcers and sometimes blindness, or even resulting in the eyeball need to be surgically removed. This can be seen in image 3. Dental issues such as gum disease and tooth damage are very common within these breeds. Brachsphalic breeds have the same number of teeth to fit inside their mouth as a longer muzzled dog. This often leads to overcrowding and requires them to be put under general anaesthesia for some of the teeth to be removed. If not, it can cause a buildup of bacteria around the teeth and when this stays on the teeth for long enough, as the crowding makes it difficult for it to be removed, it hardens and turns into tartar. This can then cause periodontal disease, which is an infection of the gums. Brachsphalic breeds have a 1.25 times greater risk of dental disease than other breeds of dog do. Downing and Gibson suggest that this is because their lower mandible is normally longer than the upper maxilla, meaning that their teeth stick outside of their mouth and lips, also known as an underbite, 
and are exposed to more bacteria, along with being at a greater risk of damage as there is nothing protecting them. In image 5, you can see where the bottom set of teeth have had to be removed due to a build-up of this tartar. And in image 6, you can see where one of the lower canines have broken off. The selective breeding has led to skin folds being created around the dog's muzzle, called the nasal folds, and around the tail. Fluids such as urine, saliva from the panting caused by the breathing difficulties, and tears from the previously mentioned eye issues, can get stuck in the skin folds, creating a damp and moist environment for bacteria and fungus to grow. Additionally, brachycephalic breeds already have a predisposition to allergic skin disease, which makes them more prone to infections. It is more than just the physical health conditions and the pain that affect brachycephalic dog welfare. These health conditions can lead to a number of mental and behavioural issues decreasing their quality of life, meaning that their needs are not met. The consequences that follow on from the previously mentioned health conditions that might not always be visible can sometimes be just as negatively impactful on their welfare as the physical conditions. For example, if the condition requires them to put on any medication or painkillers, long or short term, there can be some negative side effects. The most common include drowsiness, gastrointestinal upset, liver or kidney damage, salivation, allergic reactions, seizures, neurological issues, lethargy and behavioural changes. The breathing difficulties can cause them to have trouble exercising and expressing natural and normal behaviours, including running and jumping, or even as little as completing their daily walks. This can lead to weight gain due to not getting enough exercise, which can consequently lead to joint issues. Socialisation is a key part of meeting a dog's welfare needs. However, due to their short skulls, they often have difficulty socialising with other dogs. When greeting a new dog, they use their olfactory system to get to know the other dog and find out key information about them, such as their gender, health and emotions, by sniffing them. The squished effect that their short skull has given their muzzle means that when greeting another dog and trying to smell them, they have to get their pushed-in nose close to the other dog, as seen in figure 5. This can be seen as invasive and offensive to the new dog that they are meeting and can sometimes lead the new dog to give a correction behaviour or to run away. This means that they are missing important socialisation for them to have all their needs met. Dogs are social creatures and although they are not required to live with another canine, it positively affects them to interact with other dogs. However, if they are accepted by another dog, um, they often encounter issues during play as they cannot run or jump correctly. It causes them to have to lunge forward and this is seen as a threatening behaviour to other dogs. It's also common for other dogs, dog breeds, to not like brachycephalic breeds, especially during the first time that they are meeting, as their distinct and distorted facial features make it harder for them to gauge their facial expressions and to work out how the brachycephalic dog is feeling so they know how they should engage with them. So the best analogy for this is for you to imagine you are approaching a new person who you have not met before, who is wearing sunglasses and a face mask, and you are asked to try and describe how they are feeling. Overall, these repercussions from the health conditions caused by a breed being brachycephalic are commonly associated with a reduced average life expectancy, with French Bulldogs having the shortest average life expectancy of 4.5 years, compared to a similar sized non brachycephalic dog breed, the Jack Russell Terriers, of 12.5 years. English Bulldogs have an average life expectancy of 7.4 and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels of 7.7. .7. To evaluate and determine whether or not it is humane and ethical to breed brachycephalic breeds, we can take into consideration their quality of life. Quality of life is the standard of health, comfort and happiness experienced by an individual and can be used to measure if a life is worth living. Having a higher quality of life can improve the individual's overall life satisfaction. The five animal welfare needs are covered within the Animal Welfare Act are important for assessing an animal's welfare standards to prevent suffering. These include the need for a suitable diet, environment and social groups, the need to be able to exhibit normal behaviour patterns and the need to be protected from pain, suffering, injury and disease. However, often due to brachycephalic breeds features and health conditions, these are unable to be met. Difficulty eating due to dental issues, difficulty completing enrichment and playing with toys, difficulty running and jumping, and suffering from pain of genetical conditions and health complications of the breed. Therefore, 
even if the dog owner meets all of these needs by providing the correct diet, environment and social groups, they still might not be getting these needs met, which are needed to ensure good welfare. So how can we reduce and prevent the suffering of these breeds? Although there are many welfare concerns with brachycephalic breeds, there are a few ways that we confront the breeding of these breeds and decrease the welfare concerns from occurring. For example, the main way that we can prevent the breeding of these dogs is to spread awareness of the complications that come along with breeding and promote breeding other healthier breeds of dog that have similar physical traits and characteristics to the brachycephalic breeds that the owners are looking for. For example, instead of a pug, looking into a different breed such as a border terrier that has fewer health concerns. Signing petitions is a positive way to help spread awareness and make a change. If these petitions are signed by over 10,000 people, they are considered for debate in Parliament. The Blue Cross currently have a petition called Hashtag End the Trend to prevent the bad breeding standards of brachycephalic breeds by aiming to ban the use of brachycephalic dog breeds in advertisements. Um, this is to help discourage the demand for flat-faced breeds. The link is in the description. Organisations such as PETA UK are calling for severely brachycephalic breeds such as pugs and bulldogs to be removed from crufts to prevent the promotion of the breeds. Many people see breeds on crufts and they assume that they are a good, healthy, reliable breed and are encouraged to purchase them. Therefore, by removing them from these events, it will help to decrease the demand for them. The link for this is also in the description. There are also ways that we can reduce the bad breeding standards of brachycephalic breeds to increase their welfare standards. This can be done by selectively breeding the healthiest of each breed in an attempt to reverse their negative features and develop a healthier breeding standard. With petitions like the Blue Cross and PETA lowering the demand for these breeds, it can then help to make this goal more achievable by reducing the quantity of dogs that are in demand and this prevents puppy farms and backyard breeders who enhance the bad breeding standards. Another way this can be done, as suggested by O'Neill et al, is crossbreeding brachycephalic breeds with mesophallic dogs to counteract the genetical issues. However, Waters suggests this can be unethical to the mesophallic breeds as they are inheriting health conditions from the brachycephalic breeds that they would not have previously suffered with. So what about the existing brachycephalic dogs? To improve the welfare of current brachycephalic dog breeds, there are surgeries available to help them improve their breathing, as this is their main welfare concern. A staphylectomy is done to remove a portion of the soft palate that covers the airways to help open it up. As seen in figure 9, this can help to clear the trachea. More commonly, a resection rhinoplasty, or allofold resection, can be done to remove the syngnotic nares by enlarging the nares opening and removing their pinched nostril effect to improve the amount of air that the dog can inhale at once. This can be seen in figure 10 where they have shaved off some of the centre of the nares, opening it up to open up the airways. Although highly effective, with 95 to 98% of dogs experiencing at least some improvement, this does not resolve the issue completely, only aiding some relief at an expensive price, averaging £1,000. The surgeries also follow with high levels of pain, which require painkillers, along with the invasive surgeries requiring general anaesthetic to be completed and left with wounds around the mouth and nose risking infection. However, the surgery to remove the syngnotic nares are advised to be completed when the dog is young and during their spay and neuter, so they only have to undergo this general anaesthetic once. Breeding brachycephalic dog breeds can have major implications on the dog's welfare. It affects their welfare due to causing physical and mental health conditions that mean their welfare needs, which lead to a good quality of life, are not met. It is important to consider ways the breeding of brachycephalic breeds can be reduced, such as promoting other healthier breeds of dog, signing petitions and improving the breeding standards. Implementing these changes can lead to a significantly positive impact on brachycephalic dogs' welfare. Here are the in-text references used throughout this presentation. Please pause if you are interested. And here are the references used for the figures.
Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to respond.